What's going on NDM crew? Painting. That's what we're doing today. The Dotson. Now, the next couple videos are going to be painting. To be honest, I got to paint the valve cover, the oil pan, the engine block, the engine bay, the belly pan. I got to respray a couple things on the grills because you saw the chips and then I have to respray the booster just because I ended up missing one spot. So, yeah, painting. Today we're going to be covering the engine bay and then the uh, engine block, which is outside. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm going to get changed. All right, I'm all ready to go, wrapped up in this little paint onesie, I guess. So just a little thing on safety when you're painting, especially since I'm doing it inside the garage and I'm not going to be technically in a ventilated area, um, then you're definitely going to want to have a respirator that's meant for, uh, for painting. That's what I have uh, right here. And obviously if there's anything that you don't want to get painted, then get it out of the garage or just cover it up with something because overspray does travel. Now there's not going to be wind in here because everything is sealed. Um, that's why I wanted to do it in the garage. But still, it will travel and you want to make sure it's covered. Now, as you can see, I have the car pretty well covered. There are some spots that aren't covered, but um, I'm not going to be spraying too much in the upward direction, like pointing up towards the sky. So I feel like it's not going to come over the car and then travel down. I'll mostly be spraying down or just straight to the sides. Um, that being said, though, it still might travel and get little specks on the back of the car. But most likely it will be able to be polished off and stuff like that. But before we go into paint, now in the last video you saw that I did go and cover up, tape everything off. That's step one, but you still have to go through and make sure the surface is gonna be clean. So I'm gonna go through with brake clean first, and then I'm gonna go through with rubbing alcohol and make sure that all the surfaces are perfectly clean and not going to have any grit or anything like that because the sand from the sandblasting gets everywhere. So like, I've blown out the car a couple times, vacuumed the car a couple times, I just vacuumed the car again just to make sure and now I'm going to go through and wipe everything off so if there's anything I missed or anything that's stuck into the surface, I will wipe that off and it'll be clean and good to go. So, without further ado, I've been talking for too long guys, I've been talking for too long! Let's go and get some painting done. I'm excited. You excited? Wow, I look like Breaking Bad something. Hmm. Let's do it! Alright, so another quick thing I wanted to mention before I get into uh, just cleaning up the, uh, the engine bay um, before we paint is you gotta think about your surroundings a lot when you're painting as well. Um, not only because I said, okay, outside it might you might get debris and stuff that gets stuck in the paint. You want to think about temperature as well. Now the paints they spray better in a certain temperature and they perform better, dry better in a certain temperature. So it's something that you definitely want to think about and look at. Now my primer that I have, it doesn't specifically say on it. It just says don't get it past a certain point because it's pressurized and it'll explode. And then the actual top coat, it says between 18 degrees Celsius and um, 35 degrees Celsius. So if you could see right here, I have the heater on in the garage. Now it's not cold outside, but it's not hot. I think it's going up to 16, 17 degrees Celsius. Now, I've had that on for about an hour. Now, I have a thermometer in here. It says it's about 18, 19, so it's getting to the point where it's right in the range that the paint performs well in. Now, that's why I'm also going ahead and leaving myself time with the heater on while I'm cleaning the engine bay, doing all my brake cleaning, and then my um, rubbing alcohol uh, cleanup before paint. So it gives the garage time to get to temperature and also lets the cans, which I have here, the cans just adjust and get to the temperature that it needs to be. Because if you left this, say, in the shed or in a spot that was colder, yes, the temperature of the room may be that may be proper for the paint, but the actual paint itself in the can is not at the temperature. Like I can tell just by feeling it, it is cold, so we're going to let it sit while I do this. Hopefully it'll be good to go. It's just something to think about in the back of your heads. Like I'm not, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not a professional painter here. It's just when I do paint, and especially using spray cans, because people think, okay, spray cans you're not gonna be able to get a good finish off of. 
you can. It's yes, it's not going to be perfect, um, but going exactly based off of what the can says will definitely give you a better finish. So the point I'm trying to get at here is just follow the can rec can's recommendations when you are using spray cans, and it you'll probably end up getting a better um, overall looking paint job. Now you guys will see what comes out here, and this is using an epoxy primer base, and then um, just an enamel gloss black top coat. Now, for the gloss black top coat, you do not need to top coat, I mean, or clear coat. Um, I was actually reading, and apparently, if you do clear coat the gloss black, there could be reactions depending on the type of clear coat. I don't know, this is what I've just heard and read. But we'll see how it comes out. I have a lot of these, so I could go and go crazy and do like 15 coats if I wanted to, light coats. But probably not gonna do that. We'll see how it covers and yeah. Let's uh let's get into cleaning the engine bay. Okay, so the brake clean round is done. Now I'm just gonna go over really quick with the rubbing alcohol. This is an extra step. I know like brake clean has a lot of alcohol in it. Could do the job and clean it up, but just to be sure, I'm gonna go through with 70% uh, rubbing alcohol and clean it all up one more time. Really quick, like I said, it's just gonna be a quick pass. Then once I'm done that, we'll start shooting the paint. Okay, so now it's time to paint. We got the engine bay cleaned up. Which I'm glad I did because there were a couple spots that I found that had a little bit of um, little bits of sand stuck underneath, so I managed to get all that out. So we're not going to actually embed those into the paint. Now it's not a really big deal because it was underneath some lines on the frame rail. Now is anyone going to see this? No. But you know what? I feel like dirt and debris just act as little pockets for moisture and stuff to get into. Not really, but I'm crazy that way. So I'm not sure if you guys know how this epoxy primer works. Now a lot of people say, oh, you can't get epoxy primer in the can, it's impossible. Um, let me explain to you why I ended up buying this. Um, so the way it works is there's a little canister thing, not a canister, it looks like a, like a little nozzle. So what happens, it comes with this little tip so you put that right into the bottom, so you line it up, and then you smash it. And what's that gonna do is there's a little actual um, unit inside here with the hardener. So you activate it by breaking it with this little piece, and then you gotta shake it for a couple minutes, and then it'll mix it all around, and that's where your hardener comes in. So right now, nothing is mixed. There's no hardener, it's separate. The hardener is inside this can in a little um, canister that's separate from this. So this should work in theory. I'm pretty excited to see how it works because I've never used epoxy primer, but I know it is really good for preventing rust and giving a really good seal to the metal. So let's see what happens. So the way you do this is two minutes of shaking without the epoxy uh, mixed in. Then you're gonna put this little thing on there, release the epoxy or the hardener, shake it for another two minutes and you'll be good to go. So I got the primer on. Now the way this works is, at least the instructions that were given to me, because there's nothing on the can, is within an hour of spraying, you have to put your top coat on. Uh, it just allows it to stick better, and um, it's pretty much like a, a wet on wet kind of thing. So while the paint is still wet, or the primer, the epoxy primer is still wet, you put your top coat on. So that's what I'm gonna go do now.
painting is done. The footage you guys just saw is of the paint. Now it isn't fully um, dried or cured yet. It takes about 40 minutes to handle then to completely um, settle and harden is um, I think four hours. Four hours and then um, to be completely done at the whole process it says about 36 hours so a couple uh, a day and a bit. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. That took me quite a bit of time and I'm hoping once it's fully cured we'll come back to it and it'll be um, exactly the way we want it. Now it may not look the greatest at cer in certain spots, I don't know yet because it's not dry but it's not really a big deal for me just because there was rust starting, there was stuff there that um, could lead to bigger damage. Um, in the future so I'm glad that we got all that cleaned up and there's going to be no rust per se so the actual finish of the engine bay isn't really too too big of an issue for me so that's it for this video hope you guys liked it stay tuned for more the engine is going to be in soon and the car is going to be running I'm so excited for this you guys hope you guys are excited as uh, I am and see you guys next time <laughs> why do they sell cans that are broken why are you using a can as your why? Because <laughs> I paid for this shit.